Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Sam, show my. Sorry, guys. I have to eat. Welcome back, you guys, to my YouTube channel. And I think you're already wondering why there's so many food in my table right now. That is because you are invited in my Salu Salo or a get-together party. And this is all Filipino food. Every single Filipino food that is on my favorite list. And you, watching right now, you are invited. That one Filipino co-worker you have, who's invited you to every single Filipino party, and this is one of them. So I'm introducing you guys to all Filipino food, and at the same time, I will also be answering all of your questions that you have asked me on my Instagram stories. So you're gonna get to know me and at the same time, you're gonna have a mukbang slash get together with me. Let's do it. So first of all, I'm gonna let you guys know what are the names of this food and you might have already eaten it if you have a Filipino co-worker, but some of these uh, dishes you're very familiar with, like pancit, lumpia, the rice, of course, and here we have crispy pata. This is shomai, sisig, which is my top favorite Filipino food, just to let you know firsthand. Palabok, that is good. And while I'm on it, I'm gonna be answering some of your questions. How did you find your boys as a new grad? To be honest with you, it's really hard when you're starting in a floor because, you know, your anxiety, uh, the doubt you have in yourself, that imposter syndrome of you thinking like, am I really a good nurse, always like takes you instead of you, you know, building your ability to have that confidence to work as a nurse. You have to remember that going through nursing school is so hard that if you make it to nursing school and get your license as a nurse, that is an accomplishment, and not only an accomplishment, but something you can tell yourself whenever you feel like, you know, doubting yourself or not having that voice to, I don't know, talk to residents, doctors, families, and tell yourself like, I'm proud of me. I am able to do this. And just remember that, so yeah. And that's how I find my voice as a new grad, because I keep, you know, I keep telling myself every time I go to work when I was starting, that I can do this. I'm able to provide a proper high quality care to my patient. I'm able to communicate properly and it's okay to make a mistake because that's where you grow. That's where you get the experience as a nurse. And the most important thing in nursing too as a new grad is that you have to build your confidence but you cannot have too much confidence because too much confidence leads to bigger mistakes. And that's when big error happens. Like you have to be in between of like not having confidence and being overconfident. You know what I mean? You have to remember that asking questions to senior nurse therapy. That's one thing I did. I signed up for therapy. I was really hesitant before to go to therapy just because I feel like, you know, I think I can manage things by myself. But the problem is that I didn't realize is that growing up, this world didn't prepare me for all the battles and all the you know the problems that you can encounter and a therapist is someone who can give you that tools for you to be able to not be in a shock state when you encounter something new or something different in your life and through therapy i realized a lot of things and helped me get through things so one thing i've been doing right now is also trying to read a book i'm organizing my hours in a day for me to be able to do other things. See, if I don't push myself, it's just gonna stay the way it is and nothing's gonna change with my habits. And reading this book that I'm gonna show you guys, Atomic Habits helps me identify habits, like bad habits that I have accumulated, you know, growing up and it became part of me and it became almost my personality. And it helps me like change those habits and turn them to a good one. And it doesn't matter if it's like small changes that you do. Like for example, um, that example of me, like, you know, I'm super tired from work. I just cook, took a shower. My brain is telling me like, oh my God, you should just rest, be on your phone, keep scrolling on TikTok and Instagram. But 
instead of scrolling on TikTok and Instagram, I can just like, you know, tell myself like, let's go to the gym. It's just an hour and a half of gym. It's gonna take all the stress that I have accumulated over that same day and turn it to a better one. That's how I stay motivated. And again, I'm in the process of being a better person and more organized person. And all I have to do is to keep going and you can do it too. Next I'm gonna try is Lumpia. Lumpia, everybody knows what Lumpia is. Every single coworker you have in a hospital, in a factory, in a call center, if you work with a Filipino, they always bring you Lumpia because Lumpia is one of the best thing ever. And I forgot the sweet and sour sauce that comes with it. Give me a quick second. All right, you guys, we got the sauce. This is gonna be so much better. But the pancit is really good. Have you ever failed a subject in nursing school by two or three percent? How do you manage the depression? This is a very good question because I think a lot of us in nursing school have struggled with that. And I know the feeling of like failing by two or three percent on like an exam that you studied for for two or three weeks or you know you stayed up so many nights so late just to like be able to study all of this. And it sucks, you know, when all of the other people who who you know, who who studied for like a week and they get like 60 or 70 or 80 and you're like, what the hell man? Like what did I do wrong? And yes, I failed a subject, I mean an exam in a nursing school and it was pharmacology and I studied for it for a month and I was so organized and prepared for it and I thought I know every single thing that I studied for and then when the result came back, I got 58. Oh, 54. I got 54 and the passing grade was 55. I think that's the shittiest feeling that I've ever had when I've seen that and all of my friends, they all passed. And I have this one friend who studied for five days before the exam and they got 65. But what I've realized is it's just an exam or even it's just a subject, you know? It, and it doesn't matter if you fail at say a subject and you have to repeat a year just to retake that subject. Nursing school is not a race. It is competitive in nursing school. That is the truth about it. But also, like, it's not something that you should be competing with others. Like, your only competition is yourself. Because at the very end of the day, you could fail two, three subjects, repeat nursing school for three, four years, or it doesn't have to be nursing school. You're still gonna be seeing those people that you have started nursing, medicine, engineering with somewhere. And there, there might be actually your co-worker. And guess what? It's just they, they, they now have experience, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna get your own experience, and that's fine. Yeah, you have to see the positive in like what's happening. And for me, what I believe is like if something happens in your life, that's because you're not meant for it right now. Like it's not meant to be for you right now. And it always works out. Next thing we're gonna be trying is palabok. Palabok is another pasta type of a Filipino dish. I usually get I usually get served palabok when there's birthday, just like pancit, because we believe that you always have to serve something like long, like pasta, if somebody is celebrating a birthday, because that means that they're gonna have a longer life, and that's just how we believe things. So every time I have a birthday, I always get spaghetti, sweet spaghetti, pancit, palabok, and this one is made up of I think peanut butter, shrimp, egg, and it's just chicharron. Mm. And you guys might think like I'm not gonna be eating all of this food for sure, but don't worry, I have a whole family and friends that if I take them right away, right now, they would all be rushing to my place just to eat this food because Filipino food is elite. Next is we're gonna be trying embutido. It's made out of pork again, and there's sausage inside and cheese. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Mm. 
Advice for new nurses and how to gain more knowledge to provide a better patient care. So one thing I can advise for new um, nurses is that what I always do to be able to provide a better care for my patient is first of all, you know, go to that teaching part of your unit because they always teach you about, you know, the unit, how to get, uh, you know, really familiarized with the things that's happening in your unit. And at the same time, what I always, always do whenever I, before I enter to a patient's room, I always imagine that the person I'm going to be taking care of is my grandma, my grandpa, or my mom. That's what I always do. Like, how would I want a nurse to take care of my family? And that always helps me to be able to provide a better care for my patients. Because when I do that, you know, I don't just see them as strangers. I see them as my family. And I think that's what a lot of my patients, like, appreciates because I really get close to them. I develop this trusting relationship. I talk to them. I get to know them in a deeper level. And you get to do that, you know, not every time in nursing, but when you get a chance, you have to do that. Because again, nursing is not like an AI type of job that you do the same thing every single day. You have to make a difference on people's lives. And for you to be able to do that, it's through communication, through, you know, providing a high quality care based off, you know, not just being a nurse, but like having the heart of a nurse. Does that make sense? Next, <clears throat> we're gonna be trying crispy pata. I only get to eat crispy pata back in the Philippines when my grandpa to like cheaper alternatives, which is, which is chicken and pork. And even chicken these days are super expensive in the Philippines, my grandma's telling me. And you know, pork is really good, but it's not for everybody. Like to my Muslim friends, I'm really sorry if you're seeing this right now and you're watching it. It's not a disrespect or anything. It's just, this is what I grew up eating. Next question we got here is, do you have a mental health story I'm in need for some advice? Yes, and I just mentioned it in one of the questions. Again, it's burnout and social anxiety that I have that was diagnosed like recently. I'm working on it with a therapist, working two and a half years through the pandemic. It took me a long time to realize the stuff like the mental stuff that I have to deal with just because I, th I thought that it was just you know I'm tired and things are gonna get better also I'm working on myself other than the therapist to try to like organize my life because I think organization helps you deal with a lot of mental health stresses and issues because once you figure out your life and it's like a set you know type of life you're able to manage like things that's going to that's gonna come to your life I don't know if I'm making sense but you know if you're suffering from like depression anxiety and other mental health issues I think it's really good for you to first of all recognize that you have an existing illness and that it's not something to be ashamed for but it is something that you can work on yourself to get better for yourself next thing we're gonna try see Sing, si sing. And this is not for everyone. So PSA, before you continue on this very, very like specific dish, you can skip it. It is made out of pig's ears. That's right. It's boiled, it's clean. It's my top favorite Filipino dish of all. What's the best advice you can give to a tired nursing student? Lots of love from Israel. Take some time off for yourself. Always remember that studying too much, which I did, and I'm telling you guys now this because I only realized it after. Before, I usually would study for an exam from 7 a.m. till 2 a.m. Like me and my friends would go to like a library that's open until like 3 a.m. and we would stay there from 7 a.m. till 3 a.m. Like thinking about it now, though it worked out for us, we passed, we were so tired and almost in the verge of burnout, but even though we passed, I think it wasn't, it's not a good practice for nursing students to do that. You have to put a time in a day where you're just not doing anything. Like it could be you just like scrolling on your phone or like sitting down or taking a nap, 
but I didn't do that when I was in nursing school because I was so stressed out that I'm gonna like fail my exam if I don't study enough. But sometimes like I would study for like three weeks from 7 to 3 a.m. And guess what? I only like get like 65 out of 100. And like it's so disappointing when you're studying so much because nothing actually retains in your brain when you study that much of a time. Like you have to study in like in in groups like you, you need to like study for three hours stop for an hour then go back to studying and then for another three hours and then stop because that's the only way for your brain to retain the information and another thing is i wasn't also organized when i was in nursing school and i remember in my book that i'm reading right now atomic habits is that your brain is not something for you to like keep information like it's not your brain is not made for you to keep information so you have to use like things that's like available to you like resources that's available to you like journal calendars for you to like take out those other informations in your head so you can focus on studying like remembering your next uh, doctor's appointment the birthday of your mom um when you're gonna pay your courses next like those things, like trying to remember that on the very next day of like having those things like be done is stressful. And imagine you're studying and at the same time remembering all those information, that sucks. And also remember to take some rest, okay? Because if you don't take, you have to see it. I've been working so hard creating the merch and the merch website. Like I have a small team working for me right now and I'm I'm 125% involved in all of it because I want to make sure that if I'm making a merch store, it's who I am, what I am, and what I think people would like. Like I didn't just create a merch store and like let other people handle it. Like I'm 100% like involved on it. Like I I brought all the products to the printing shop. I contacted dealers and whatnot, and because I want to make sure that you know like it's me. Like you're getting a product that's me. So tune in because at the very end of November, I'm gonna be releasing my first ever merch and you're gonna have every single thing that you're expecting to it. Things that you've been asking me to please release. Yeah. And I guess that's it for our YouTube video for this time. I am so happy guys. Thank you for coming in and eating with me. I cannot finish all of these, but like I said, I have a lot of friends and family who, if I texted them like right now, they would be rushing to my house just to eat all of these. And again, thank you for watching my YouTube video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment so I can comment back to you and share our YouTube videos. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Mahal na mahal ko kayo lahat. Thank you.